How's it guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are at Beaver Creek Coffee. So uh, I'm sure you've seen me uh, make my coffee in the bush and uh, you know on several occasions I've mentioned that Beaver Creek is the grind that I use. So I'm out near Port Edward and decided to uh, you know come through to the farm and uh, take the coffee tasting and tour um, option which is uh, 75 bucks and you get a bottomless coffee and uh, I think uh, the tour starts at 12 o'clock and will be about uh, 45 minutes to an hour where they're going to take us through the process of how they make their coffee so I'm excited for that I'm a bit uh, jittery already because I've had my two cups of coffee already um, I drove through from Lake Ilan this morning um, there is a back route that uh, comes uh, basically mostly dirt road and then jumps onto the N2 and then there's a short uh, sort of drive on uh, a back road that uh, had two uh, surprise speed bumps in that they're not marked, they're the same color as the road and you hit them at 60 and you're like, oh wow, surprise. So yeah, it was a bit of an adventure getting in. But uh, we're here now, it's about 11 o'clock, so we've got about an hour to kill, and then uh, we're gonna go out on that tour. I've asked uh, the lady if I can do some video, so hopefully I can do some video while we're on the tour, and then, uh, yeah, uh, I'll show you all uh, what the experience is about, and basically how my uh, home brand, or my go-to brand of coffee is made um, from been to cup basically so uh, looking forward to that tour and uh, catch you in a bit and um, yeah like i said it'll be another 18 months until we start These plants here are mostly for the ornamental market, so selling here and doing this for people to put one in their, in their garden. Uh, I mean, if, if these seeds are, I don't know, they're not unique, but they, um, you get two types of seeds. You get orthodox and unorthodox, I think it's called. Getting some signs of it. So one one needs to be dried or mm. get some heat, and then will germinate. Mm. And others have to be fresh. You start germinating it in August or winter? Um, no. So we so with this new system, it's, it's a lot faster. The seedlings are growing a lot faster. So we we have to try and we try to work out on the timing. There's kind of different nodes in the coffee value chain. Yeah. This would be the first one, the washing, washing mill. The second would be the dry mill. The third would be the roastery. And the fourth would be the cafe. Um, what's very unique in, in this way is that we do everything in the same. So the cherries are fed through this hopper with water, through this machine called a pulper. And this is the machine that does what I did with my hand or your hand, squeeze the very just watch it over here. So most of the skin is pulled below, or pulled below, and then the rest of the seeds come out through the front and then back into plastic containers, um, of which is the same container that the fruit comes here. Do you have a use for the outer portion? We work here on it, yeah. We have used it. Have, there is like flour and, and a tea like product that's currently being sold. The name of that? They, they call it Cascara. Yeah, fishy with the. Yes. Can you smell it? Mm. Sweet. 
Yeah, so this is uh, like uh, yeah, so this is that fermentation process that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, we were closing the buckets, but now we're opening them. All these little monkeys. Yeah, three plus. Um, so they in these containers for anywhere from twenty four up to seventy two hours. Is that to, uh, to help get the, that skin on the pulp off? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that layer is insoluble uh, once you remove the skin. And if you to dry it, it's very difficult to dry because they tend to stick to each other. So to facilitate drying, you ferment it and then wash them. Does it affect the flavor? So if you're killing the seed, killing the embryo in the, in, in the smallest like, one thing, and then also research shows that if you go above, I think it's like 28 or 28 degrees Celsius, the cell structure starts breaking. And we've done this through, um, through a wash method. So this is a, it uses friction inside here, where the coffee is um, mainly the friction between the seeds themselves, the way the, where the husk and silver skin is removed. And that gets blown out into the silo, and the green beans come out here. Yeah, so once it's fully dried, that la layer se separates pretty easily. Oh, okay. okay. Um, so this is also drying. You can see, you feel the temperature is a little bit warmer in here. Uh, so the final drying, we do at a slightly higher temperature. <laughs> it's all just drying racks like you saw there, but yeah. in a bin. And then this used to be a bin. <laughs> okay, cool guys, so the uh, coffee tour has come to an end. Um, quite informative, but uh, also uh, still jacked up on coffee now. Um, gonna grab lunch quickly and then gonna head off to Durban. It's just going one o'clock. So if I leave here around two, I should be in Durban by around four, hopefully missing some of the traffic. But 
a great day out at uh, Beaver Creek. And yeah, it was quite good seeing how they, um, you know, grow the coffee and how they uh, process it and get it uh, ready for us to consume. Like I said, Beaver Creek is my preferred uh, brand of coffee. Whenever I'm out, you know, in the bush, uh, I do take some grind along. So I got a few bags as well to go. And then uh, I'll be enjoying it for the next few months uh, whenever I make my way out to the bush. So if you are a, ca a coffee lover, go check out the Beaver Creek website. Um, they have all their coffee uh uh, beans and grind on there and it's only I think about 95 bucks for delivery anywhere in the country so it's a good service.